this problem or that problem. It's just held you back and held you back and you've been restricted and you've had this obstacle and that obstacle and this problem and this report from the doctor and this from the economy and this issue in the relationship and this issue with the job. Some of you, you feel like the enemy has pulled you back and pulled you back and pulled you back and pulled you back. But you know, whenever you declare Jesus as your Lord and you transfer your trust, that God, God, you take a hold of the bow. God, you take a hold of the situation. When God takes a hold of it and releases you, whoo! Being Your Best with Trey Johnson. Hello, my name is Trey Johnson. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm expecting God to speak to you right where you're at today about your family, about your business, about your calling. You know, it's not a coincidence that you've turned on this show that you're watching today because we're going to grow together. We're going to get into God's Word and we're going to hear what He's saying about the season that we're stepping into. We're going to discover some things of what we can renew our mind to and how we can apply God's Word, how we can grow and be the best us we can be. So get your pen, your paper, your iPad, your phone, whatever you're going to take notes and let's get into God's Word and let's grow. Because the same Holy Spirit that enlisted you saw the potential of a warrior on the inside of you. He says, so that you may please Him. The word please, whenever you look at it in the Greek, it paints the picture. We, we get this. It paints the picture of a horse that works really good. And we sit back and we watch it and it's so pleasing to the eye. What pleases God? faith. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so Paul is telling Timothy, Timothy, I need you to remember it was such an honor when you were enlisted to be in the family of God. And it was such an honor when you were called upon to be a leader. Keep that mindset that when you were enlisted, you're not thinking about telling your your commander in chief, who is Jesus, you're not thinking about telling him no. See, a good soldier receives orders and follows through. A good soldier receives order and he ain't coming back until he accomplishes it. And Paul is telling Timothy and he's telling you and I, we need to think like a good soldier. What has God told you to do? What has God created you to do? What has God called you to do? You've been enlisted into the family of God. He says, and I need you to think like you're going to accomplish everything that God put you on this earth to do. He says, I need you to think like a good soldier. Look at your name and say, think like a good soldier. Psalms 25, verse 2. It says, oh my God, I trust, lean on, rely on, am confident in you. Let me not put, be put to shame or my hope in you be disappointed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. The word triumph there is the Hebrew word hep alatis. I've probably butchered that, but it means to jump for joy. That is exult, to be joyful and rejoice. Now he's saying, God, as I'm pursuing you, I'm asking you, don't let my enemy triumph over me. Don't let my enemy be joyful over me. Don't let my enemy have a party because he whooped my tail. Johnson paraphrase, of course. Look at Micah chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. But as for me, I will look to the Lord and confident in Him. I will keep watch. I will await with hope and expectancy for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. So Micah is saying the same thing as David. He says, even though I have fallen and the devil is laughing at me because I've fallen, he's laughing at me because I made, made a, a dumb decision. He's laughing at me. Micah is saying, I've spent time with God and I'm realizing that I might have fallen down, but I'm coming back. I might have fallen down, but I will not quit. I might have messed up, but I'm going to get back in the game. And you hear me, enemy, instead of you laughing so loud at me, you hear me. I'm going to speak in such a volume, such a degree, with such authority that at one time the enemy was laughing at us, but we're going to start laughing back at him. Why? Because we have triumph is ours. Triumph is coming. Triumph is ours. And when you're triumphant, there's a, a pep in your step. When you're triumphant, you think different. You believe different. You talk different. You walk different. When you know you have the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. 
Listen to what he says in Psalms 37, verse 13. The Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that their own day of defeat is coming. So if God is, is sitting in heaven laughing at the enemy, I want you to identify the enemy in your life. We know the enemy, his job is to steal, kill, and destroy. Anything that is stealing, killing, and destroying. There's times when you don't have the finances you need and the devil's telling you you never will have the finances you need. He's telling you there's no way that your life is going to turn back around. But you know if the, if the devil is a liar, and he is a liar, John chapter 8, verse 44, so he's a liar. And he's telling you that there's no way, guess what? There is a way. If he's telling you it's not happening, guess what? It's happening. He tells you that God's not coming through this time. Even though I had a lady message me today and she said, okay, even though you've seen God do this and this, do you still ever struggle with the doubt and with the unbelief? And I said, as long as we live on this earth, there's going to be a devil. And it's going to be, even though you might have seen God show up a hundred times, he is a liar and he's going to show up, the devil's going to show up and say, God's not going to show up this time. God's not going to bring the money this time. God's not going to heal your body this time. God's not going to deliver this time. But the devil is a liar. So if the devil is lying to you and telling you it will not happen, guess what? It is on its way. It is happening. So if the devil's telling you there's no way you'll triumph, guess what we should say? Yes, it is. Triumph is mine. I'm going to start thinking triumphant. I'm going to start believing triumphant. I'm going to start talking triumph. I'm going to start expecting triumph. Say it. I'm going to expect triumph. You'll have to excuse my technology skills here. Sometimes I surprise myself on some of the stuff I do. <laughs> Hebrews eleven six. 6, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. I'm going to repeat it. But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God, I've got to ask, is this me? Am I being a doer of this? Must believe that He is must believe that he is what? Must believe that he is whatever you need him to be, but in this case you must believe that he is a God that opens his hand freely to satisfy right in the middle of disorder and chaos to those who aren't moved by it. Say it, I'm not moved. Believe that he is a God of triumph. He is a God of triumph. If he is a God of triumph, and I am created in the image and likeness of God, then I am a child of God of triumph. If he is triumphant, I am triumphant. If he is victorious, I am victorious. If he is an achiever, I am an achiever. If he is going to make a public spectacle of the enemy, I'm going to make a public spectacle of the enemy. So in the Old Testament, David would say, God, you don't let the enemy laugh at me. You don't let the enemy triumph over me. In the New Testament, nowhere in the New Testament do you see God saying, I'm going to do something about the devil. Why? Because he already did something about the devil. When Jesus died on the cross, Jesus stripped them, disarmed all principalities and powers. Then he rose up and gave you and I his name, you and I his blood, you and I his word, you and I his power. He says, now you go. You are victorious. Now begin to think victorious, believe victorious, talk victorious, act victorious. Bring my will on earth just like it is in heaven. Do you think his will is triumph in heaven? Then it's triumph on earth. He is. He is the rewarder of them that diligently Seek him. Say it, I am triumphant. Psalms 47, verse 1. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. Now, now this word, triumph, rena, in, in the Hebrew, it's, it's properly a creaking or shrill sound that is a shout of joy, gladness, joy, proclamation, or of rejoicing. So, so what he's saying here is that when a person has the voice of triumph, I want you to think about this. If there's a voice of triumph, you're not trying to work triumph up. You, if there's a voice of triumph, then there is a thinking of triumph. There is a belief of triumph. 
There's an expectation of triumph. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You get so full of triumph in here that when pressure comes on, triumph is going to come out here. And in order for me to see it out here, triumph has to start here, filling my heart here, releasing it here. Remember, the Holy Spirit is, is hovering over the disorder, the chaos, whatever. Physical chaos in your body the Holy Spirit is hovering and he's waiting for the word to come out of your mouth to speak triumph. There's, there's people watching right now that there's disorder and chaos in your stomach. There's, there's somebody watching right now that you have disorder and chaos in your heart. And right now I send the word of God forth into your body and I command the disorder to dissipate, the chaos to dissipate, and I release the healing anointing to flow freely into that person's body from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. And I call you healed and I call call you whole in Jesus' name. So, so clapping is a sign of victory, a voice of triumph. If there's a voice of triumph, that lets me know I'm thinking triumph, I'm believing triumph. A voice of triumph is a voice, voice of faith. 2 Corinthians 4.13 Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written... I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. See, the voice of triumph is the voice of faith. Where do we get faith from what is written? Notice he says, the, I believe and I speak according to what is written. The voice of faith. Faith isn't begging. Faith isn't, I wonder what God's going to do. Faith is believing what God said and speaking what God said and doing what God said. And God is saying, triumph is coming. God is saying, I'm going to open my hand in the middle of disorder and chaos and whatever area of your life you'll believe me for. And, and he is going to open his hand. Say it, he's going to open his hand. What a powerful teaching. I, I want to encourage you to go to the website, TreyJohnsonMinistries.com, and order a copy of this teaching today. You know, the reason we put these teachings together in series form is so you can get it in you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. While you're at the website, I want to encourage you to look through the rest of our product. I've written a, a few books that are on there. You can sign up for our podcast, our leadership development, personal growth. There's so many things we have to add value to your life. And while you're there, I want you to pray about becoming a partner with Heather and I. You know, we're going around the world and we're sharing the goodness of God. And, and the partners to this ministry, when you're a partner, every person that's saved, healed, deliver, you're a part of. We can't do it without you. And maybe we can go places that you can't go. But together, we can keep reaching the world for the glory of God. There's coming a time that the body of Christ, as the Father releases us into our areas of influence, as the arrows hit, we're going to have wisdom beyond our years. We're going to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation operating in us. We're going to know how to do it. We're going to know when to do it at that moment, at that time. And it's going to bring people into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We're going to see it in the corporate world. We're going to see it in every area of influence. No matter where we go, we should be expecting the power of God, expecting miracles, signs, and wonders. Wonders, and you are the arrow. I am the arrow. We're the arrows that God is directing and releasing, but it comes back to a place of relationship. His super comes upon our natural. His super comes upon our giftings, our calling, our assignment, our passion. So when we show up on the job site, we're full of the Spirit of God to release the healing power of God. Whenever that arrow is sent into your life, and that arrow looks like doubt, it looks like fear, it looks like unbelief, it looks like the thought that you can't be who God's called and created you to be. You can't go where God has created you to go. And when it hits your mind, boom, it was the bomb of the day and it was designed to explode and ignite. When Satan sends those arrows our way that it might try to explode, but it's going to ricochet when it hits your shield of faith and it goes back upon the enemy instead of taking you out, it's going to take him out. When we're faithful with the little, then he makes us ruler over much. So the anointing in me and then there's an anointing 
on me. The power of the Lord can be present to deal with any situation in our life. Yoke is sickness. Yoke is lack. Yoke is strife. Yoke is division. Yoke is condemnation. Yoke is guilt. Yoke is poverty. Yoke is anything that steals, kills, and destroys. When we call upon the name of Jesus, we're recreated on the inside. The Spirit of God comes on the inside. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus. He is in and I. We've got to rise up and fight for something that's worth fighting for. You know what? Your destiny is worth fighting for. Your purpose is worth fighting for. Your health and healing is worth fighting for. Your family is worth fighting for. Your purpose, your vision, what you're created to be and do is worth fighting for. He sees potential in you to be who you are called and created to be. But do you see the potential? in you. If I have to go through some stuff, it isn't going to shake me. It isn't going to move me because I have winning on my mind. Begin to think like a warrior and think like a winner and believe like a warrior and believe like a winner and talk like a warrior and talk like a winner and have the attitude of a warrior and have the attitude of a winner. When it comes to being a mom, you know what should come out of our hearts? So help me God. When it comes to being a leader, when it comes to being a child of God, when it comes to fulfilling our assignment, you know what we should end? That so, so help me God. We needed God. We have God helping us and we're going to need God to help us in the future. But it can't just be just this Christian, Chinese, Christianese, um, black coming out of our mouth. No, no. So help me. God needs to be a cry of our heart. Psalm 60, verse 8. Moab is my washpot over Edom. I will cast my shoe. Philistia, shout in triumph because of me. Shout in triumph because of me. Shout in triumph. When you look at this word triumph, it's connected to victory. It's connected to achievement. It's connected to gladness. It's connected to joy. Why is joy so important in our relationship with God? Romans 15 verse 13 says there's joy and peace whenever we truly believe. So an indicator that I'm truly believing that God's going to show up is there's joy and peace. Why would God want us to keep our joy? Nehemiah 10 says the joy of the Lord is my strength. So if I don't have joy, then I don't have strength. And if I don't have strength, I don't have the strength to resist the devil. If I don't resist the devil, he doesn't flee. But if I keep my joy because I'm believing God, it's going to keep me strong. And when I resist the devil, he has to flee in Jesus' name. So he wants us to be distracted by the disorder and chaos so it saps our joy, which saps our strength, which takes us away from our ability to stand our ground and to live a triumphant life. He says right here, shout in triumph because of me. Why, why could we shout in triumph because of God? Because we have the victory in Christ Jesus. We shout in triumph because we have the name that is above every name. We shout in triumph because the word of God does not return to us void. We shout in triumph because God has assigned angels to our life and they are working on our behalf right now. When we truly believe we have what God says we have, there's joy. There's a triumphant mindset. We, we shout because of God. Because he is for us and not against us. If I truly believe that God is bigger than anything I'm facing, there's going to be joy. There's going to be a shout of victory. There's going to be a, a, an attitude of triumph. Say, triumph is mine. Let's keep going. Psalms 106, verse 47. He says, Save us, O Lord, our God, and gather us from among the Gentiles to give thanks to his holy name, to triumph in your praise. Exodus 15, verse 21. I told you we're going to read a lot of scripture today, just sowing the seed. And Miriam answered them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Now this is after God had delivered the children of Israel from Egypt. The children of Israel were going to the promised land. God parts the Red Sea. God leads them through the Red Sea. Pharaoh and his men and his army come after the children of Israel. The children of Israel get to the other side. When they get to the other side, God releases the water, takes out the enemy, completely destroys the enemy. And so Miriam is leading a praise party on the other side. And she's saying right here in, in Exodus 15, for he has triumphed gloriously. He has triumphed gloriously. Now I want you to think about this. Hebrews 8, 6 says, 
that we have a better covenant built upon better promises. And that if God triumphed under the rule of Pharaoh, it doesn't matter what government we are under, our God will still triumph when we connect our faith to Him. He says triumph is coming in the middle of disorder and chaos. Triumph is mine. But what is it going to take to bring it from the unseen to the seen? What is it going to take from just hearing the Word of God to experiencing the Word of God? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. It says, For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. What are we hearing? Because it said they heard the same good news about God. They experienced the same goodness of God that you and I experienced, but they did not connect their faith to what they're hearing. We're hearing that in the middle of disorder and chaos, God is going to open up His hand and freely satisfy those who are not moved by the disorder and chaos. We are hearing that triumph is here, that we have triumph. Whatever area of disorder, begin to declare triumph over it. Whatever area of chaos, begin to declare triumph over it. Begin to declare triumph over your finances, over your relationships, over your calling, over your destiny. Let's put some thought into it. Let's put some prayer into it. Wash over the water of the Word. Let this Word just roll over your heart and roll over your mind and ask, Holy Spirit, show me what triumph looks like for me. I'm not created to be you and you're not created to be me, but God is saying regardless of what you are created to do, my will is triumph, victory, achievement, success. You're going to celebrate like your general has come back making a public spectacle of the enemy. You are in his army and you are designed and you are equipped and you are empowered to make a public spectacle of the enemy as well. No longer will he be laughing at you, but you rise up and you begin to laugh at him. Sometimes you got to laugh by faith. Ha ha. I know my life looks like hell right now, but I'm not out. I'm still breathing. I'm coming back. Ha, 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 ha. I know my bank account looks like it's in the negative, but God is working right now to bring increase into my life. Ha, 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 ha. The favor of God surrounds me like a shield. I don't know how I'm going to go around the world. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Ha, 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 ha. But I will get it done in the name of Jesus. Are you with me? Triumph is mine. Say it. Triumph is mine. Now, we're getting ready to, to, to wind it down here. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. This is on page uh, 5 of your notes, I believe. But remember, God disarmed. You can read, go back and read some of these scriptures on your own. That God disarmed the principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world. And He triumphed. He triumphed. He triumphed. And if He triumphed, we triumphed. Now listen to this, 2 Corinthians 2, 14 and 50. But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in defeat. No, that's not what it says. I was just seeing if you're paying attention. That's not what he says. It says, but thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumph. Always leads us in triumph. As trophies of Christ's victory and through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. For we are the sweet fragrance of Christ, which exhales unto God, discernible alike among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. Because Jesus triumphed, you and I triumph. And he says right here that you and I, he's leading us into triumph, and we are trophies of Christ's victory. And through us, Say me. Through us, he spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere, for we are the sweet fragrance of Christ, which exhales unto God, discernible among the unsaved and the saved. But the sad thing is, and you know this just like I do, instead of us Christians being a sweet fragrance, a lot of times we've been more like a stinky odor. We've got to ask ourselves, what kind of fragrance? You know, when I think of odor and fragrance, I think of the bathroom. I mean, I'm not, sometimes I'm just simple. You know, sometimes you follow, you're waiting for the bathroom, and this person's in there a long time, you're thinking, oh, bless the Lord, you know, I really got to go here. So you go in, and there's not a good fragrance, there is a, an, an odor. 
And a lot of times when you walk into churches, there's an odor. There's an odor of defeat. There's an odor of lack. There's an odor of the curse. Instead of the sweet-smelling fragrance of victory, the sweet-smelling fragrance of an overcomer, the sweet-smelling fragrance that I don't know how this is going to turn out, but my God promised me all things are possible to me because I believe. I don't know how the things are going to work out, but all I know is God is going to open His hand to me. Say to me. In the middle of disorder and chaos, he's opened his hand to me and he promised me triumph. I don't know how, but I've got the triumph. That's that's all I know. That's all I know to tell you. Uh, Thanks be to God. He always causes me to triumph. Thanks be to God. He always causes me to triumph. Thanks be to God. He what? Always causes us to triumph. Go around your house beginning to declare that. That you and I, what does it look like for us to be a trophy? of Christ's victory? What does it look like for us to release the sweet-smelling fragrance, not bad odor of a bad attitude, of complainers, of negative, of grippers, of sucking our thumb, pulling our ears, wah, 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 what about me? But no, giving off the fragrance of triumph. Say it, I've got triumph. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55, 57, 58. It says, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory, making us conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now think of this. O death, where is your sting? O death, where is your victory? Death does not have the victory over born again men and women of God. Death having triumph over us would us not be Asking Jesus, I know it's not right English, but us not asking Jesus to be our Lord and Savior and us dying and going to hell. That's when death would get the victory. But when we called upon the name of Jesus, Jesus took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Death no longer had the victory. And when we accept Jesus, death no longer has the victory. You know, we're talking about triumph and how we have triumph. And the greatest victory in our life is when you and I make Jesus Christ our personal Lord and Savior. So if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, if you've never settled where you're going to spend eternity, would you just pray this simple prayer with me right where you're at, whether you're driving down the road, whether you're watching this at home, wherever you're at, just pray this simple prayer with me. Father God, today is the day that I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart to be my Lord and to be my Savior. Now, according to God's Word, when you prayed that prayer, you received forgiveness and you went from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of Jesus Christ and you can be certain that you will spend eternity with Almighty God. Now, I want to encourage you to get connected to a good local Bible teaching church. If you need help, we'll do our best to try to connect you to the ones that we're connected to or we know in your area. If not, then go to the website. Start getting our daily devotional. Start listening to the podcast, the minute encouraging words I do on social media. Go to our YouTube channel. There's different things that you can do to add value to your life, to know God and to be your best. This is Trey Johnson. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.